Oh hey guys, brought home this vintage all-in-one compact stereo. It's from my brother's house. It's been kept out in the garage. So we'll see if I can clean it up and do any repairs. I wonder what happened here to this border. It's just been hacked off like I wonder if some creature was gnawing on that or something. It's really... doesn't make sense why that would be like that. Other than uh, some creature getting in there and chewing on it maybe. I don't know. AM, FM, FM multiplex tape, and phono. McDonald. So... I'm not sure who would have actually made this. BSR looking turntable. Pretty dirty dust cover. Um, Snickers? I am trying to shoot a video here. Would you mind? Manufactured by Cape Tronic International. Well, I don't know who that is either. One IC21 transistors, 19 diodes. Hmm, let's guess what that IC will be. It's either in the radio section, you know, the IF section, or the output, audio output, the power amp stage. It'll be interesting to measure the power from this thing. It has front and rear speakers, and these are kind of broken. I'll have to see if I can fix these. Well, let's get it plugged in and turn it on. Okay, I have my portable speaker hooked up. And first power up. Well, I heard a thump. Ooh. That's pretty bad. Sneaky six. And we are very happy to be with you. Monday night at 10 on youtube.com slash iHeartRadio. Celebrate safe at JCPenney Memorial Day Sale. Save up to 35% with major appliance hot deals on your favorite brands like GE, Samsung, and LG. That's getting your pennies worth. JCPenney. The stereo and dash warehouse is bulging with speakers, amps, radios, subwoofers, and more. We've got to blow this out. Slash prices up to 90%. New use. Oh, these controls, they need sprayed badly. Never did like these slider controls. They tend to get really bad. Stereo and dash. Seems like this thing's got some power to it. Open at 11 daily. Nestled among willow trees and... Fed first. Mm -hmm. It's kind of... What's a Christmas movie? It's not... Favorite cookie. Okay, I'm going to refer back to the Ohio Constitution. The Israelites and the blessed Israelite. What is what is. Okay, well, there I you go. You're, sitting, you're here, sitting here saying, I'm what a the next. Okay, well, the controls need cleaned. FM seems to work okay. AM works. It doesn't seem that sensitive. And I'll try this turntable. It seems to be a BSR type. Turns freely. But will it actually play? Well, I examined the stylus and cleaned it up. Looked at it under my microscope. It seems to be in good shape. So, I'll do a little test here. Twisted Sister. What is that? I 
Okay. It's not turning. Nope, it's not turning. I can hear the motor going, but it's not turning. Oh well. I sprayed the controls. I'm just using my Radio Shack contact cleaner. Just went through the hole right here and uh, sprayed it. Run them back and forth a few times. That helped immensely, though the treble control still has a little bit of scratchiness to it. Like I say, I don't really care for these sliding controls. They seem to go bad a lot worse than a regular rotary type control. And I got this turntable apart. Well, the platter removed. Uh, the grease, it wasn't too bad here, a little bit gummy. But the, uh, uh, the eject, I guess, control that moves the tone arm. The grease here is really nice, but it got really gummy up in the bearing, so I'm going to clean that out and uh, put some new grease in. Now, uh, turntable repair people don't get on me too much. I'm, I don't know much about turntables and repairing them. But uh, I just use this grease. It's what I had, so that's what I'm going to put on it. And see if we can get it going again. I did uh, clean this cap stand here. Oiled the motor. This is, is really needed cleaned uh, cleaned up the idler wheel okay it's all back together again while I had it apart I cleaned up the top of the stereo and turntable but now is the moment of truth will it work skips there. Well, I can't let that play too much. And see what happens here. Okay, so that seems to be working just fine now. Okay, I was able to get this thing fully disassembled. Problem is, I had to get the turntable off because this had nuts on the back and there was no way to get my hand in there with pliers so I can unscrew those because of these wires. You know, they're all soldered. I was thinking I might have to desolder them. But I learned something. On this record changer here, you know, it has these clips to hold it down, you know, so it can't lift all the way off. And they're normally horizontal like that. And I was wondering how in the heck, I was figuring I have to bend this tab up and pull this off. But these turn vertical, and they'll clear the hole. So I was able to lift that out. And, you know, there's just some connections here to unplug the motor and the signal connections there. Uh-oh. Well, the cat's going to check it all out. So I got into this thing. So, so a few things I discovered here. It has dial lights, and both of those are out, so I'll have to... Um, rig up LEDs or something. I'm not going to buy anything to fix this. 
on the 8 track the mechanism works at least that moves the track the head to the different tracks but the center two lights are out they're LED so it might just be a connection issue here and oh yeah I was able to repair these loose speaker connectors I got this Snickers <laughs> so I put this on a solid surface and bent these tabs down Snickers is bumping against the camera there so these are nice and tight now well as tight as they're going to be anyway so I got those fixed and here is our amplifier output just these four transistors flapping in the breeze this is a channel this is a channel and I measured across the color uh, the uh, yeah the collectors and it's 16 volts and I can confirm that now that I have this apart I can measure the power supply but this is probably a 12 volt transformer after rectifying and filtering you'll have a higher voltage it'll be like 17 or 18 and with some load you end up with 16 volts but if you uh, crank up the volume that'll drop even from that so I'm guessing you get about uh, two and a half watts which we'll measure and it's just a discrete amplifier this whole thing is the amplifier it looks like five transistors per channel so it's it's not going to be anything special it's, these are one amp transistors and at that voltage level no way would I put four ohm loads no heat sink there's no heat sink that clips on or nothing they just float in the air and here's the IC and here's a better shot of it Motorola MC 1310P date code 7611 so if that's a real date code this is from 76 or 77 and that's probably a stereo decoder IC just from the position of it and the parts that are around it see over here is the IF stuff but you know this is sitting here it's, uh, if you look it up it, I'm gonna guess that it's a stereo decoder I don't have the proper incandescent bulbs so I made a light using a Cree LED I really need clear heat shrink tubing but don't have any so I just wrap some packaging tape around it current limit 470 ohm resistor and we'll turn that on and that should do the trick some soldering and heat shrink tubing oh yeah that is lovely now I'm looking at the LED track indicators in the 8 track player and believe it or not the center LEDs the center two LEDs are open circuit so I'm desoldering them, hoping the traces don't lift off this old board. See if I can get these out of there and replace them. New LEDs are in. I also had to change the resistor under this tubing here. Because new LEDs are extremely efficient compared to ones made in 1976. So I had to reduce the brightness. Let's see here. I have to set the camera down. All working again. I'll have to clean the heads and uh, make sure the amplifier back here is working. Uh, like I said, I don't have a tape to test with. Okay, I got it assembled. Except for the turntable. I need that open so I can plug my preamp into this for the power test. 
cleaned it up looking pretty good I do think an animal got to this because there's uh, null marks on the side here as well so I think an animal has nibbled on that thing well another problem I noticed I was only getting stereo on a couple stations so I hooked up this wire here as an antenna and it wasn't doing any better so I did some adjustments to some of the IF cans and now as you can see it's falling out of my I don't know why. It's worth a fun for other leaders. Sorry, did you... Yes, I did. Dayton International, right? Send their families by purchasing your USO coupon book today. Now I'm getting stereo on pretty much all of the stereo stations. I also tuned up the AM, so that's helped a little bit. And now the moment you've been waiting for... Or maybe you've not been waiting for it. Okay, we got the 8 ohm loads connected to the outputs, both channels driven, maximum power before clipping. Let's see what we get here. I can't I can't jack around here. Getting a nice glare, unfortunately. Not much I can do about that probably. There we go. And here we go. Let's see here. There's clipping. There's the 1% pilot signal, but we have this second order harmonic that shoots way up there. This thing has a lot of distortion. i let it cool down a bit. Retake that measurement. Just clipping 3.93. That's under 2 watts, isn't it? Let's see, uh, what did I say? 3.93. Let me square that. Divided by 8 ohms. 1.93 watts maximum output per channel from this thing. I thought I'd do a little better than that, but yeah, around 2 watts. Okay, okay, it's all back together again, all cleaned up, good as I can get it. Should give another few decades of service, I would think. I polished the uh, dust cover. Has too many scratches and uh, chemical stains and people setting stuff on it. And that cleared up a little bit. I use... Uh, this Nova stuff, it does a pretty good job. So this wraps this repair up. Thanks for watching.